Welcome back. He's a best-selling author, TV star, and inspirational speaker who encourages people around the world to chase their dreams and live life to the fullest. Ben Nampton joins us now in studio. Good morning, Ben. Great to have you. Great to meet you. Good morning. Good to be here. Yeah, and you're here in town for Red Talks Conference. So yeah. what is that about? So Red Talks is a speaker series about city life, you know, urban ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have three speakers, including myself, and uh, they are all going to bring ideas about the future of the city. Um, and so I, I love Vancouver. You know, I grew up in Victoria. I've lived in Vancouver. And um, so this is about just new ideas. And because we have so many people flooding to the cities mm -hmm. right, all over the world, but really this is the first time in the last, you know, in the last couple hundred years, there's only been two decades of this type of living. So th there's a lot of things to talk about. So this is about opening up that conversation to the yeah, community. Yeah, density, population, traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're known for spreading a message of radical possibility. So what does that mean? So I believe that anyone can do anything, yeah. you know, at the core. And so I talk about things that, you know, help you get towards the, your personal goals and things that you've always wanted to do. And w essentially what I'm encouraging is to, to tell people, like, if they have an idea about the city, now more than ever with technology and with community, you can do it. You know, all you have to do is just take the first step and enroll the people around you. And so, yeah, it's about uh, following your passions. And if that passion happen happens to be something about the city, then and it's about following that passion. I love your story. You mentioned you're from Victoria. Yeah. You played on the national rugby team. Uh, but you didn't really know what you wanted to do and uh, even battled some mental health issues. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you're like, let's make a movie with a buddy and do this thing. Yeah, totally. So I hit a crash. I, went, I was at University of Victoria. And I just hit a wall and I got depressed and I dropped out of school and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I decided to surround up myself with people that inspired me. And one of the kids from my neighborhood was a self-taught filmmaker, his name was Johnny. And I was like, Johnny, let's make a movie. And we got Johnny's older brother, Duncan, our other friend, Dave, from Oak Bay High School. And we started talking about making a movie and Johnny was at McGill University and got assigned a poem called The Buried Life. And we thought, that's it. There's all these things that we wanna do, but they're buried. So let's call this movie The Buried Life make a bucket list, go after it, help other people. And it was supposed to be a two-week road trip in 2006. Yeah. And 12 years later, you know, we're still doing it. And, and now it's really about living this lifestyle, living this life where you actually follow your dreams, you know, and, and knowing that you can actually do that. So inspiring just to see other people achieve their dreams and come up with some crazy ones. Like, how did you manage to play basketball with Barack Obama? That's what I want to know. Yeah. So... First, we drove to D.C. Yeah. We were actually asking people on the street if they knew the president, right? We <laughs> figured out very quickly that that wasn't going to work. Um, and then we found out that his personal aide at the time used to play uh, basketball for Duke. Yeah. And, he, and his name was Reggie Love. And Reggie Love set up all the basketball games with the president by sending out a text the day of to senior officials in the White House. Yeah. So we thought, we got to get to Reggie. And we found his email, and we would tell him that we had these games set up for him and the president, and we had a court reserved, and we'd show up, and they wouldn't show up. And finally, we get a call from Reggie, and he's like, I've heard about you wanting to play basketball with the president. I, like, what's going on? Yeah. And so ultimately, he said, I think I can make this happen. And the press team said no. And I think he felt bad. And he said, you know what? If you're ever back in D.C., let me know. I'll show you the White House basketball courts. And so we were, and he showed us the White House basketball courts, and we're shooting around. And the president surprised us on the basketball court. That is amazing. We had no idea he was even in town. And he, he, he was there, and the White House photographer was there. And it was kind of in that moment that we all realized, you know, four kids from Victoria, B.C., yeah. that, um, that you can really do anything, you know, if you put your mind to it. And so, and that's what the buried life has, has really taught us, and as well as the importance of helping other people. Because mm -hmm. we found that when we cross things off our list, it's, it's, it's fun, it's amazing, but when you actually help somebody else, it fills you up in a way that doing things uh, for yourself just doesn't, and that kind of resonates longer. And, um, you know, from, from the first person that we helped who was in Kelowna, a guy named Brent, who we helped get a truck because he was wanting to start his own business coming out of a homeless shelter, uh, you know, we're still in touch with, with Brent. And, uh, and it, it, so it's, it, it is true, you know, helping others really has an impact. Inspiring a lot of people. What a great vocation you have. Thank Congratulations you. on all your success and good luck tonight. Thank you so Speaking much. Speaking at? Red Talks tonight, 5.30 at the Vancouver Playhouse. Okay. Yeah, and it's actually cool. So we have the planner, the poet, and uh, also... Ooh, I had this one memorized. The planner, of the course. poet, and the professor. Okay. Yeah, all speaking. Professor from Stanford, Tony Seba, Jessica Hezmat, who's the ex-planner of the city for uh, Toronto, and poet Cleo Wade, who's, uh, who's incredible. So... 
come on down. All right, got to run, but thank you so much for being here. Thank Spending you. Spending time with us this Cheers. morning. If you want to watch the segment again, you can uh, check out our website, ctvmorninglive.ca.